All right, so this is going to be one long video showing two completely different ideas for doing the same animation. Um, your idea was you were going to have uh, water go across the screen and it will reveal a logo and a kayak goes across and then it has to resolve itself somewhere on the screen. So I'm going to show you a couple ways of doing that and I'm going to show you a different technique using something we're going to cover a few weeks from now. Um, it's, it's called compound effects. That's when you combine more than one effect together to create a unified effect. And for that we're going to be using Wave World and Caustics. Okay, so first I'm going to import my footage. I could double click in the project panel. So you got your project panel. This is where you input all your stuff. Composition, that's where you view your work. Timeline, this is where you assemble stuff and move your playhead and set up all your keyframings. So I could double click in here or go file, import, file. And I'm going to have to do this one at a time because these are Photoshop files with layers. So I'm going to want my boat. I'd open. This is for the second part of the tutorial where I'm going to be doing uh, Wave World and Caustics. Now, since this is layers, when I open up the Photoshop, I, cho I clicked Choose Layers and this is the layer that I want right there because I didn't name it because I'm lazy. And there's the layer for that. So I'm going to double click in here because that's the second way you could do it. Or you could go File, Import, File if you choose to. Now I'm going to bring in my Kayak. Don't want Merged. I want Choose Layer. And that's the one. If I'd named it, it'd be there. But like I said, I'm a lazy fella. All right, I'm going to double click in here again. I'm going to pick whatever this thing is. I don't know what it's called or what it does. I'm just going to guess. Choose layer. Didn't name it because I'm consistent. All right. Now, I'm going to make composition, new composition. And let's see. We want 24 frames. 1920 by 1080. And for this, uh, it depends upon how long your animation is going to be. It could be 15 seconds. It could be 10. It, it could even be seven. It depends upon how long it feels right for the logo. So I'm going to do 15 seconds. And if I need it to be shorter, I could always just shorten it later on. And don't forget, save frequently, save often. I'm going to call this uh, Boats. And I'm going to put it right here. I'll also put my work file on the server for you to take a look at. In case you get lost, you could always reference my file and look at my keyframing and how I came up with this. Now, when you'd first started in class, you used a path with the sh the pen tool and, you know, made your shape layer. That's one thing you could do. So, since nothing is selected, I can use the pen tool and draw whatever shape I want. Pen tool is right up here. And right next to it is your shape tool, where you could choose, you know, square, rectangle, I mean, you know, not square, rectangle, like square, star, all that stuff. So just clicking around, clicking and dragging gives me Bezier curves. Since I don't want a fill for this, I'm going to click on the word fill, not the color, the word fill. Oh, I got to zoom out. Yes, yeah, so I clicked on it. Then I don't want a fill, so I'm going to click this little button right here. Zoom out, hit all right. And I do want a stroke... So I'm going to click on this, the word stroke, not the color box next to it. I want a solid stroke, which is this one right here. I'm going to hit OK. And I'll just crank up the size right here. Right there. Now, you want to add trim paths to this. So one way you could do it, you could do it with the Add button right up here, because I've got the shape layer selected. Or... I could select my shape layer down here in my composition panel, twirl down the little arrow next to it, and there's add right there. Either way, does the same thing. I'm going to name this so we know what it is. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it Wooder uh, Shape Layer because it was made with the shape tool. All right. So if I went and I did add, I clicked on the little button. 
and I do trim paths, I'm going to see which direction I want the water to go. And I want it to go this way, from left to right. So I'm using the end stopwatch, going from 0 to 100. So I pick where I want the water to start. Let's just, for the fun of it, let's do the two-second mark. Normally, you'd start wherever you want in the timeline. So you move your playhead to where you want it. Then you click the stopwatch you want to animate. And it automatically makes a keyframe. And uh, let's just say this takes four seconds. So I'm going from 0%. I'm just sliding in the number thing, or you could type it in, whatever works for you, to 100. I've got two keyframes. 0 to 100. I'd select those, hover over, and right-click, and get keyframe assistant and easy ease. Now, the reason I eased these is because when I click on my speed graph button right up here in the graph editor, click that. If I'm not seeing the speed graph, I click on the little button down here. Choose graph type. It might be set to value graph. You don't know, but there's speed graph right there. Boom. Now, to see my graph bigger, and I do not want the pen tool selected, I want the selection arrow tool selected up there. Right there. I'm going to click this button right here, fit all graphs to view, right there. And that's just going to make the graph fill up and easier to work with. So I'm going to click the end keyframe right there. And you got two things, a yellow square and an influence handle. I do not want to move the square up or down. That's going to change the value of what's happening. I don't want that. I want to grab this yellow ball at the end of that, the influence handle. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to start to drag and then hold down shift. And you'll see the speed graph is going to change. So now it's going slower into the last keyframe. If I go in this direction, it's going, and I see the handle was moving. I don't want that. I just want the little yellow ball. So I'm going to drag and then hold down shift. So I just sped this up from the first keyframe, and it's slowing into the other one. You can do whatever you want to taste. And let's pretend this looks perfect. And I click on the Graph Editor button one more time to get back to my timeline. And it always zooms out in the timeline, which is really annoying. You use this down here to zoom in or out of your timeline. So now I can see more of my timeline. But sometimes you need to zoom in to see in between your keyframes. So now it's speeding out of the first one and going slower into the last keyframe. All right, that was how you created the water. But you liked the look of using uh, turbulent displays and um, displacement maps. So we're going to do it differently this time. I'm going to delete this. Boom, I just selected and hit the backspace key. If I want, I could just right click in here and go new. Or I could go up to the top, Layer New. Now to add things to your timeline, you've got to have the timeline selected. Here's my timeline selected. There's my project panel selected. Boom, timeline selected. So that's selected. I'm going to go Layer, New, Solid. Not a shape layer. Solid. Color does not matter for this. And if I'm feeling lazy, I could just hit the Make Comp Size button, and it'll make it comp size. I'm going to name this. I'm going to call this Water Solid Layer because we're using a solid. You don't need to name it that, but you know, this is just so that you can look at it for reference. All right. With the layer selected, I'm zooming in and out with uh, the mouse wheel in between the two keys. That's what helps you zoom in and out. With the select, I'm going to draw a mask. So I grab my pen tool, and it must be selected. If it's selected, you're going to get a mask. If it's not selected, you're going to draw a shape layer. We want the mask. So let's pretend we want this to go like that. Like Let's say that's just the motion of the path you want for your water to go along. Next, in my effects and presets over here with the search bar, I'm going to type in stroke. And here it is down here, generate stroke. I'm going, you can either double click on it because this layer is selected, 
or you can drag it onto the layer. And there it is on the layer stroke. If I choose paint style right here at the bottom on transparent, you'll see what happens. It's going to get rid of that green solid. So that's why I said the color doesn't matter. I'm going to change the brush size to something nice and thick to reveal the text. Let's try. Oh, it's not letting me go past 50. That's awesome. I'm using an older version. So here we have right here 50 for that. So I'm going to hit save just because I don't want to lose my work. You've got start and end just like with your trim paths. Let's try end. Yep. That's the direction we want. We want it to go from left to right. So I'm going to click the stopwatch for end. I'm going to have it start, uh, let's say, half a second in. We'll click the stopwatch for end. Let's pretend we want this to go across in, uh, let's just say, four seconds. I could always just click right there and do my time code. Four period zero zero is four seconds. I'm going to type in here 100 on the uh, line for end. So now we have what's going to be our water coming in. If you want to change the color of it, you can always click the swatch right there. Make it blue. Hooray. Okay. We've got that. So it's going on. I'm not going to animate it off yet. Okay. That's something different. We're going to do that separate because I'm going to do that last so that I could just duplicate this and use it as my reveal. All right. Got that. Next, we're going to make our fractal to influence what's going on. So I'm going to go back to my project panel right up here because that was effects. Now I'm back in my project. You might have a little double arrow here to go between the two of them right there. I'm going to click New Composition right down here next to 8 bits per channel. So I click that, and now I'm going to call this Fractal Noise. Hit OK. It's the same size as the other one. That's fine. I'm going to go Layer, New, Solid. Make Comp Size. Color doesn't matter. Fractal. Oops, I spelled it wrong. That's fine. Fractal Noise. Comp Size, sure. All right. So now when we go up here to the effects, and I type in fractal, there's my fractal noise. I'm just go double click to add it to the layer because it's already selected. Now, the more contrast we have, like the crisper this is, the more splotchy uh, liquid drop effect we're going to get. So first, I'm going to change my fractal type to, let's try dynamic. Yeah, that's looking better. It's starting to look more. And I think we cranked the contrast up a lot. Let's try 416. Yes, yeah, so that's already punchier. It's starting to look like little drops. Uh, we're going to decrease the brightness. Let's do 45. So now, see, it's looking even more so. Now, the scale of the fractal will also influence the way it looks. I twirl down my transform. If I make it smaller... And we'll get tinier droplets and more of them to give it that splotchy water look. So let's try, let's try 16%. See, that's even more information there. I'm going to offset the turbulence going from left to right because that's how the effect is going to move. So I'm going to click the stopwatch. I'm also going to click the stopwatch for evolution. They're both right over here. See, offset turbulence and evolution. So I set those. Uh, let's just go to the 10 second mark. It doesn't matter because it's not going to be on the screen that long. I'm just doing that to give myself some play, some uh, leeway. Now, since I want it to move left to right, this is X value. It goes side to side. And this is the Y value. It goes up and down. So I'm going to be changing the X. And let's just move that. And the more pixels you move it, the faster it's going to be moving. So let's just see how that's going to look. I'm going to drop down my resolution right here under full. 
I'm going to put it at quarter just so I can preview it faster. See, now I'm getting a faster preview because I'm not looking at it at a full resolution. And I just zoomed in with my mouse wheel. Change it to fit. I'm going to want it to move faster than that. So uh, if I select my layer and press the U key, it pulls up my keyframes. And over here, you've got your three buttons. Go to the previous keyframe, add a new, or remove a keyframe, so careful with that one, and go to next keyframe. If I click go to next, it sends me to my next. I'm going to move this over a lot more. Now let's see how it's going. It's a little better. I want to move even more than that, though. One thing I do is I could move this keyframe closer if I wanted to. That would speed it up. This is at 27.5, so let's try 5,000. That's about twice as fast. That's better. All right, cool. And then I'm going to go to where this keyframe is, and I'm going to give this, let's try three full circles. Whenever you're using rotate, evolution, or phase, the first number, 0x, is how many complete circles. The second is if you want to do a specific, like 15 degrees. So at the first circle over here on the side, I'm going to type in 3 at the 10 second mark. So it's going to go from 0 complete revolutions to 3 full revolutions. You see everything moving over here. So see how that looks. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right. We'll see how this looks when we put it in our composition. So here's my composition right here. I'm going back up to my project panel. I'm going to save. Remember, save frequently, save often. You don't want to lose your work. In my project panel, I'm going to select the fractal noise. And I always grab from the type because, you know, grabbing from anything else, it gets a little tricky. So I'm, I just have the type selected. I'm putting it right there. The next step is to click on the eyeball icon for the fractal noise layer and turn it off. So it's in my composition, but you're not seeing it. It's just going to be referenced. I'm going to save again. I select my Witter effect. And now I'm going to do displacement map. Because remember, displacement maps work off of black and white grayscale images only. Because black and white, that's like 1 and 0. Uh, white would be like 100% of an effect. And black would be 0% of an effect. And middle gray would be like 50%. So I'm going to put my displacement map on the wood or solid. <clears throat> and then I've got to choose a map layer for it to reference right here. So I'm going to choose, see right there, there's my map layer, displacement map layer. Go choose fractal noise. And already you see it roughened. So as it draws on, We've got more of a liquid type of effect. Uh, let's try vertical displacement 15. See how it's moving it much further more. Let's try 25 here. See that? It's all to what effect you want to get, how much it's going to influence it. You could always change what's being displaced, like the alpha. See how it looks different now? Before it was red. There's, if I set it to blue, so if I change this to blue, Nothing really happened. Big surprise. Let's try alpha. See, now it moved. But before, I think it was red and green. So I'm going to change that back to red and green. All right. Let's move this even. Nope. See, it's all in how much you want it to influence it, what the fractal's doing. I'm going to do about that. Like, like I say, you can always do it to taste. Now, this is an example of look at this, edit that. Say I really want to dial this in. I go back to my fractal composition down here in my timeline because I left it open. If I click on the lock up here, click on that, now I can go back to my main animation and edit my fractal noise even though it's in a different composition. So, like I said, scale is everything. If I crank the scale up, we'll see less distressing. See? Now it's looking more wavy and less like paint splotches. So it's up to you as the designer which way do you want to go. Do you want to go distressed? 
or do you want to go like that? For this demonstration, I'm going to go like this, I suppose. Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? Well, let's see which looks better. How about we do both, one of each? This is about a midway. This one I, I kind of like. And remember, whenever you're done editing your look at this, edit that, you've got to click the lock back off so that you can go back to your other project and start editing the other effects. Now I can get to the stroke and the displacement map. All right. This is looking good. Like that. Fine. Now check this out. I'm going to duplicate this water solid layer. First I'm going to save. And I'm going to crank down my preview resolution. All right. I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to call this water inner layer. All right. Now, when I am going to duplicate this fractal noise as well. So I'm going to, no, wait, let me see. I've got this. All right, fine. Fractal noise. So I'm going to click my fractal noise layer, and I'm copying it. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to call this fractal noise inner. Let's see if this will work. I'm going to put it to the bottom, and I'm going to, I'm going to keep it on so you can see it. This is set to... Let's see. Is it transform scale 68? This one has the rougher look. And then I was saying, what if we did a smoother look? With like, I think we cranked up to 300. You see how the fractal got bigger, so it's going to influence it less. So I'm going to hide it here by clicking the eyeball icon. Now my inner layer on top that I duplicated, I'm going to choose as my displacement map instead of fractal noise fractal noise inner and look at that it's changing this so I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter of a color and remember I'm gonna hit cancel we discussed this in class hue saturation brightness if I want to lighten it I'm only gonna move along the B value hue saturation brightness so I can even darken that alright let's try darken works for me or do I want to lighten it more okay I'll lighten that one then go to my original and darken that one so this is the one that was beneath it and there we go fine and my inner one I'm going to change the brush size so it's a little thinner And let's adjust the... Nope, don't want to go doing that. We'll do that, sure. And I'm going to just change the fractal on it. Uh, let's make it less. To about 166. There we go. Fine. Let's do it one more time. Fractal noise enter, yeah. I'm going to pre-compose this. I think that will give me a better result. So I'm just going to right-click, pre-compose, fractal noise enter. Yep. I'll just call it PC at the end so I know it's a pre-comp. Move all attributes to a new... Yep, see, now now it's working. I had to pre-compose it. I knew there was something there. All right. So that's looking pretty interesting. I could even compose it one more time and make it lighter. This is pretty interesting. See that? Now, <clears throat> I didn't animate it off. And I know this needs to be thicker for this, the logo. And you might even be able to get a thicker brush size. But uh, another thing you could do is use the transform effect over top of this as an adjustment layer to... Um, magnify it if you wanted to do that as well.
<clears throat> so, I'm going to save it. Now we've got our kayak and the oar. Let's see, where's my oar? Here's my kayak. I'm going to put this on top. You could do two different solutions to this. I'm just going to draw this out like that. I could, if I want, perfectly fine. I'm going to hit the P key with the kayak selected. And if I hold down shift and hit R, now I've got rotation. Because if I just hit R, I lose the position. And if I just hit P, I lose that. So if I have one of them already set like position, and I hold down shift and hit R, I get rotation. I could. It is perfectly acceptable, if you want, to move this along and keyframe it. But before we do that, I'm going to grab my oars right here. I'm going to drag those in there. That's a bit big, looks a little silly, so I'm just hitting S to scale down. That's a little bit more manageable. I'm going to move it. My anchor point's already in the middle, and my anchor point's already in the middle. If I needed to change them, I'd use my anchor point adjust, uh, the pan behind right here. Right there. That's how you would change your anchor point. All right, now for the oar. right about there. I'm going to press the R key. I've got just this type of rotation. That's not what I want. I need to make it two and a half D. Now this is for this first um, look. So I'm going to toggle my switches and modes right down here because I'm at my modes. Now here's my switches. Here's my OR. I want it to be 3D. Well two and a half D. So I click the cube just for that layer alone. And now my rotate I can do it on the X the Y and the Z like that so I'm going to set up or I could just do orientation that's X Y and Z it's all on how you want to work your personal preference I'm just gonna do this just because it seems fastest and easiest I'm just eyeballing it so it's going down on that side. I'm going to go forward a little bit. I'm going to want the opposite motion. Let's see. That's going to the other side. Like that. So I'm going to copy these keyframes. Go forward a few. I just selected them and hit copy and when I paste they're right where I have the playhead I'm going to right click keyframe assistant time reverse keyframes so let's see what we got and let's say that's the motion we want this is just for reference now when I copy and paste so this is forward this is backwards so now I'm going to go a few frames forward and paste it again. So now it's going forward, backward, forward, like that. I'll go a few frames forward, paste it again, and a few frames forward, paste it again. I could just select all these. Let's pretend I've got the motion where I want it, how I want it. Easy ease them. Is the or those are too far apart so I'm gonna slide them down we'll slide these together a little bit more go move all these together a little bit more the closer the keyframes are the faster they're gonna move I'm not fixing all of them because I don't want it to be too smooth. You know, it's already to have a little bit of inconsistent motion. Because if it looks too perfect, then it, that's not how, no one has a steady uh, row like that. You know, there's different amounts of drag in the water. And besides, this is just to show you. Alright, 
So I want the oar to follow the boat. I'm going to press the U key with nothing selected to hide all my keyframing. So I'm going to need to parent the oar to the boat. Let me hit save. And to do that, I'm going to need my pick whip, or I could do it right here where it says parent. But I want you to get in the habit of using the pick whip because the pick whip also helps when you're doing expressions. So I need to go back to my modes down here at the bottom. And there's my pick whip. I'm going to pick whip from the oar to the kayak layer. So now, whatever I do to the kayak, let me just rotate it real fast for you. The oar rotates with it. So when we move and rotate the kayak, the oar will be moving along with it. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to, I got R already selected for the kayak. So that's rotation. I'm going to hold down shift and hit P. So I've got my position. So rotation, it's going to come in this way. Position, I'm going to move it off. I'm going to scale down the boat, uh, the kayak, and the oar will scale with it. So I'm going to go back to position and rotation. Move it off the screen. Right. So I'm going to want to start entering right about here. So in it comes. This is one way of doing it. Like I said, if you're comfortable doing it this way, fine. And you could change your path as you go along. Go forward another way. You can see my path starting to follow the path of the boat. I mean the water behind it. So I'm going to forward. If this is how you're comfortable working, that's cool. I'm just going to move it like this manually now. Show you can do it both ways. There we go. Rotate a little bit there. There's my path. Oops, no way. Go forward. Sorry, I had the wrong thing selected. Alright, so let's check the rotation of the kayak. Because we got the position pretty good. Now, right around here, I'm going to turn it a little bit. that and see it's turning back to where it was I'm just orienting it along this way this is one way of doing it like I said and I'll show you another way of doing it in a second just focusing on the one thing at a time first I did the position now I'm just focusing on the rotation this is one way of working Like that. That's one way of doing it. So let's pretend we're good and we're all done. That's one way of doing it. You've got two options here. You could have the water reveal your logo, or you can have the kayak reveal your logo. It's it's all up to you. Um, which one you want to do? Like, say you want the kayak to do it. I'm going to type in the word logo. We'll pretend that's your logo. Now, we could set the kayak up to be a uh, an alpha mat, but once it moves, it's no longer going to be covering this. So I'm going to select around the kayak and draw a very large shape. Give it a fill. No stroke. I'm going to call this my mat because this is going to be the alpha mat that's going to be revealing the type. And I want this above the logo, because remember, you put a mask above your face. And the mat, 
I'm going to parent to the kayak. So as the kayak's moving, the mat is moving. Like such. So the layer that's being masked, the logo, I get my alpha mat right here from... Now remember, this is because I'm in modes. If you're in switches, you just click the switches and modes button down here. So there's the layer to be revealed. I choose alpha mat. Now I've got the front of the boat select, which I don't want. So I'm going to change the shape of this. Let's move to the back of the boat. So once the boat moves, it'll reveal the logo. So you see how this is following the back of the boat? I just changed the shape of the mat there. So now as it comes along, see, now it's revealing the logo. That's one thing to do. So no matter what we do to the kayak, since this is parented to it, it will reveal the logo. Now watch what happens when the mat goes past the logo. The logo disappears because there's nothing there to use as the alpha mat. So my cheat to this is once I have it revealing the way I want it to, and it's already fully on the screen, I select the logo layer, and you could hit Command-Shift-D to split duplicate it. See, now it's above the alpha mat. Or, if you can't remember that, put your playhead where you want it and go Edit, Split Layer. Now it's above the alpha mat, and it'll stay revealed even once the alpha mat moves past it which would be right here because we duplicated the layer and put it above the alpha mat once it was already fully revealed. That's one way of doing it. Okay. Now, another way of doing this would be, so I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to put this work file up on the server for you. So I'm going to rename this composition. I'm going to call it um, Water Solid Layer logo. Alright. Go ahead and hit save. 